Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing really well today. So today's video is going to be oddly specific, I think is the best way to put it, because I'm going to be making some spring accessories from some old bed linens. I found some fabric in my fabric stash. One of them used to be a bed skirt and the other is a piece of an old sheet, but they were really cute spring fabrics that I thought would make adorable spring accessories. So that's what I'm going to be working on today. So first up is this detachable collar. I made this out of this white eyelet material. So it has a lace ruffle around the bottom. And I think this turned out so cute. I'll be showing you how to make your own pattern for this. And I think this is a great project to add something a little bit trendy to your spring wardrobe without having to make an entire piece. It's very simple to do and you can make these in multiple colors. So I'm really excited about this one. And then the other project I had so much fun working on, it is this little drawstring tote bag. So I saw this bag, which I will put here on Urban Outfitters and thought it was so cute. I really wanted to recreate it. And when I realized I had a scrap of green gingham fabric, it just seemed like the perfect opportunity. So this is just a little tote bag, but it has a drawstring here in the center and the base is circular. So it gives it a little bit of structure. So when you open it out, it's just a little tote bag but I think it is so cute and kind of unique. It also reminds me of something they would use like in Jane Austen's time or something like that. Um, so I think it's really adorable. So this is the second project. So those are both of the projects I'm going to be working on today. So let me go ahead and jump in and show you how I made them. To make this collar, I'm going to start by making a template. And to do this, you'll want to choose a shirt from your wardrobe that is relatively close fitting around the neck. So I've chosen this basic crew neck sweatshirt and I'm going to fold it so that it is folded along the center front. Then I'm going to line up the back of the shirt neckline with a piece of paper and trace along this curve. Next, I'm just going to freehand the rest of the collar shape by drawing a curved line about four inches away from the original curve and then connecting these two with a curved line in the front of the collar. I'm also darkening this here with a marker just so you can see it a little bit better and then marking the fold along the straight edge of the pattern piece. Then I'm just going to cut out the template and now I am ready to cut out my fabric. So the fabric that I'm using for this collar is actually an old bed skirt that I had lying around in my fabric stash that I'd gotten from my mom. It's this really pretty white eyelet collar and I thought it would look so cute as a collar. So I'm cutting out the collar piece from the more simple part of the eyelet that is just embroidered with little dots. And you can already see when you unfold it, it looks like a collar. So I'm going to cut this piece out twice. Next, I'm going to cut out a length of fabric that is long enough to go around the collar two times. We're going to gather this into a ruffle, so we want to make sure it has a lot of extra room. And I'm using this really pretty detailed edge of the eyelet fabric to do this. And then this last step is optional, but it will give your collar a little bit more structure. I'm just going to cut out one of the collar pieces from some fusible interfacing. This is medium weight. You could use whatever weight you want, but I think this worked really well to make the collar have a little bit more structure. So the first thing I'm going to do to construct the collar is apply the fusible interfacing to one side of the collar piece using my iron. Next, I can set the collar aside and work on the ruffle for a few minutes. And the first thing I'm going to do here is cut from the lower edge up towards the upper Upper edge and make this curved on each end. This is something that I saw in a pattern and I thought it worked really well because if you start sewing it, the gathers at the lower edge and then go all the way across, it's going to keep you from having to hem that short edge of the ruffle. And you'll see that when I gather it up here in just a minute. Then I'm just going to run two rows of gathering stitches all the way around the ruffle piece. So now that we have our gathers sewn in, I can go ahead and start to pull on the gathering threads to gather the ruffle piece. And there you can see how that curved edge just becomes even with the top of the ruffle and gives you this nice um, curve on the corner so you don't have to hem anything. So I find that really convenient. So I just went ahead and pulled up all of the gathering threads until this was approximately the right length. And then I was ready to start pinning it onto the collar. 
So working with the interfaced collar piece, I'm going to start pinning the ruffle all around the outside edge of the collar. And to do this, I'm matching up the gathered edge with the lower edge of the collar and placing the ruffle so that it is facing upward so that it can turn to the right side and face downward without any seam showing once we sew it down. I'm adjusting the ruffle as I go to be as even as possible in the distribution of the gathers and just pinning all the way around. And with everything pinned in place, I can go ahead and take this over to the sewing machine and stitch the ruffle down. And to do this, I'm going to use basting stitches because it will get sewn in place with smaller stitches once we apply the other side of the collar. And with the basting stitches in place, I can go ahead and sew on the other side of the collar. So I'm just going to place this on top, sandwiching the ruffle between the two and pin all the way around the outside, which is that seam allowance that we just sewed. Next, I'll sew all of the collar pieces together around the outer edge, this time using a regular stitch length as well as back stitching on either end. I did a quick check to make sure that the ruffle was looking good and nothing was caught in the seam allowance, and then I went ahead and trimmed away any of the excess seam allowance, being careful not to cut into my stitching. Then I could turn the collar right side out and give it a good press with my iron. So the collar is already looking really close to the final product, but we need to go ahead and do something to finish that raw edge on the neckline, as well as some sort of fastener for the front. And to do this, I'm going to use some bias tape. So I made some bias tape. You could always buy bias tape if you prefer. And I'm going to make sure that this piece of bias tape is long enough to tie in a bow in the front. So you want it to extend past the edge of the collar. Then I'm going to use it to wrap around the raw edge as if it's a bias binding and pin this down. And I'm also going to fold it together on the extended ends and top stitch all the way down the entire piece of bias tape. And then the very last step is to hem the ends of the bias tape. So what I'm doing here is folding over each end twice and pressing this down. I did use my machine to hem this, but I find that little pieces of fabric like this can be difficult to do on the machine. So if you prefer, you could always sew this together by hand. And with the bias tape tied in a bow in the front, that is all there is to making this collar. So the fabric that I'm using for this drawstring bag has already been through a few lives. It started out life as a sheet and then it was made into a press cloth and now we are going to turn it into an adorable little drawstring bag. I thought the colors in this fabric were perfect to be kind of similar to the Urban Outfitters one. So what I'm going to start with is cutting out two rectangles of fabric. You could choose whatever measurements you want for your bag. What I've decided to go with is a 12 inch length and a 10 and a half inch width. I 
Next, we're going to create a circular template for the base of the bag. And because I have chosen a width of 10 and a half inches, I'm calculating it for one quarter inch seam allowances. And that means the circumference of my bag is 20 inches. So I plugged all of that into a circle calculator to find the radius of a circle with that same circumference. And I'm using that to draw out a half circle on a folded piece of paper. I will link down below to a website that helps to do circular calculations, but if you preferred, you could always start by creating a circle and just measuring around the outside edge to choose the width of your rectangle. There are a few ways you can do this and still make sure that it fits. And with my template cut out, I'm going to go ahead and cut out a circle of my fabric as well. A few more pieces to go. First up are the drawstring pieces and you'll want two of these. I'm using a width of one and a half inches and I'm just going to cut across the entire length of this piece of fabric since it is not very long. You could choose whatever you wanted here and you could even cut it out longer and shorten it later. And then I'm also going to cut out the two top handle pieces. And for these, I'm going to use a width of one and a half inches again and the length of this piece will be 11 inches. And then the last two pieces to cut from the green fabric are facing pieces for the top of the bag. So I'm going to match the width of the bag and cut out two rectangles. These are just about one and a half inches wide. I just went with how much fabric I had left. And this is just going to help us to finish the top edge of the bag a little bit later. I will list all of the measurements that I used for the different pieces down below. I was really just eyeballing this based on what I thought would look good. So you can definitely adapt this to your own preference. So here's a quick look at everything I've cut from the green fabric. We have the front piece, the back piece, the two top facing pieces that match up with that, as well as the top handle pieces, which there are two of, the two drawstring pieces, and the circular base piece. We're not quite done with cutting out the fabric yet because I want to add a lining to my bag. And to do this, I'm going to use this really nice thick canvas fabric that is going to give it more structure. So from the canvas fabric, I'm going to cut out the front and back pieces as as well as the base piece. Now we can start the sewing process and I'm going to start by preparing the facing pieces. Now this is optional, but I'm going to go ahead and apply a little bit of fusible interfacing to these two pieces just to give more structure at the top of the bag. And then I will fold under one of the long ends. I'm doing this about a quarter of an inch and then pressing this down. So now working with the rectangular bag piece, I'm going to take the facing and place it against the bag piece with the right sides together and then pin around the outer edge. Then I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine and sew it down using a one quarter inch seam allowance and making sure to backstitch really well on either end. Next, I'm just going to trim away that seam allowance from the edge of the bag and then turn this to the right side. So once that step is completed on both sides of the bag, we can sew the pieces together. So I'm going to place these together with the right sides together and pin down each side. Now I'm going to leave a gap of about one half an inch at the top of this seam before you get to the facing. And that is going to allow us to insert the drawstring later. So you just want to start sewing a little bit lower down. Then you can repeat the same thing on the other side. I made sure to press both of those seams open so that they laid nice and flat, and now I can go ahead and attach the base of the bag. So the first thing I'm going to do is turn the bag wrong side out so that it's easier to match the right sides together. So to pin this together, I'm just going to take the base of the bag and place it against one of these side seams with the right sides together, and then I'll just work my way all the way around the circle, making sure that everything fits into place and is pinned together securely. Then I'll take this over to my sewing machine and sew it down with a quarter inch seam allowance, making sure to backstitch really well. So 
So now you can see we have this little pouch. It's got a little bit more structure now, and now we can move on to making the top handles for the bag. So I'm going to start with one of these pieces, and the first thing I'm going to do is fold under each of the long edges about a quarter of an inch and press these down, just like I was making a hem for these. Then, this is optional, but I decided to use this little bit of cording for my handles. You don't have to use this, but I had it lying around and thought it would give it a little bit more of a structured shape. So I'm going to wrap the handle piece around this piece of cording and pin it down and then I'll just sew this down along the edge. Then just to keep the handles in place while I prepare the lining, I'm going to take each handle and pin it to the inside of the bag. I'm placing mine at a three inch distance from the edge and just making sure that everything looks nice and neat. Then for the lining, I'm going to start by putting this together in the same way I put the bag together, just sewing the two rectangles together and then adding the circle to the bottom. Because this lining is really bulky, I'm going to trim away the excess fabric along the bottom seam allowance, and then I'm ready to add the lining to the bag. So I'm just going to place the lining on the inside of the bag and adjust it so that the base is in place. Now there would probably be a few ways to attach these together, but this is what I came up with. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually remove my stitching and my lining just to where the gap in the outer part of the bag is so that these two places match up. I didn't want to leave the gap beforehand because I wasn't quite sure how this would work. So I'm just cutting away that stitching here so that I have two separate pieces at the top of the bag. Then I'm also trimming away the excess of the lining because it was just a little bit too long here. And now these pieces are going to fit together. I can just tuck the lining into the top of the bag and it creates a really nice neat finish on the inside. Because I pressed my side seams open while I was working on the bag, everything looks like it's hemmed on the side and just looks really, really clean. So I'm going to go ahead and tuck the ends of my handles to the inside of the facing and then pin all the way across this edge so that I can top stitch it down. Here is how this looks once everything is pinned down. It looks really nice and clean, and the gaps between the green fabric and where the lining is are actually where we're going to insert the drawstring here in just a minute. So I'm going to sew this down. I'm sewing on the inside just to make sure that I catch the handles in place, and I'm going to sew across each side. To create a channel for the drawstring, I'm going to run one more row of stitching. This is about an inch and a half away from that last row of stitching, and because this is lower, it will now go all the way around the bag. To make my drawstrings, I'm going to use my bias tape maker, and this fabric is not cut on the bias, but this is just going to help it fold really neatly into a nice long strip of fabric. So I'm going to run it through the bias tape maker. You could always just fold it. And then once I finished that, I'm going to fold this in half and press it down. Next, I'm just going to top stitch all the way down each drawstring. So now the last step is just to add the drawstrings to the bag. So I'm going to use a safety pin and just run this through the channel that we created earlier. So you'll see there is an opening here in the side of the bag and I can just thread this through on each side.
I'm going to knot the ends of the drawstring together just to look more like the Urban Outfitters one. And then something that I thought of after I finished sewing this is that it would really benefit from having a drawstring bead to help it stay closed. But what I did just to kind of mimic that is on one side of the drawstring, I pulled it together and knotted that together closer towards the bag. And that helped it to hold its shape a little bit more, but I might still order a drawstring bead online just to help it stay closed. All right, guys, that is going to be it for today's video. I really hope you enjoyed it. It's been a while since I've done a video of these smaller projects, so it was really fun to work on, and I hope you guys enjoyed it as well. If you are new to my channel and you would like to subscribe to stay tuned for future sewing videos, you can do that by clicking the red button down below if you're interested, and I would really, really appreciate it. And if you'd like to keep up with me outside of YouTube, Instagram and TikTok are the two best places to do that, so I will link to both of those down below in case you're interested. But yeah, thank you guys so much for hanging out here on my channel today and I will talk to you in the next one. Bye!